Hi everybody, this is Laura Susan Johnson, and today is March 23rd, Friday, and I'm going to go back to Missing Children, True Story, TV movies uh, today. Um, I did these back in the beginning of when I created my channel back in 2016. And uh, now that I've got my channel established, I've got 50 subscribers. I'm really happy about that, and I thank you so much for subscribing. I'm going to try to make my reviews a lot less uh, slow and annoying sounding like I'm doing now. Anyway, um, the, the movie I want to review today is called To Catch a Killer from 1992. And uh, it's a really good movie. It, uh, I'm pretty sure it's made for TV, but it's made for Canadian TV. And um, the cast is pretty much uh, unknown, unknown to me. Um, because I'm, I'm pretty much American, but, uh, it's a really good movie, it's very well acted, but like I said, most of the cast, even to this day, even though it's, you know, it's from 1992, and I like a lot of Canadian stuff, but, um, I'm still not really familiar with most of Canada's actors, so please forgive me. I'll put the names in the cast at the end of the video. But I tried to find a lot of nice production stills for this movie, and I could not find a lot. So, um, most of the visuals you see in the video will, will be still captures that I created. And they are, of course, not my property. They're from... Uh, the owners of the film. To Catch a Killer is the story of the hunt for the pretty much grueling hunt for John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy, as you know, I, I really I'm a strong believer in do not give serial killers notoriety, do not give serial killers fame, do not give them any kind of glory, but nevertheless, that seems to be society. I guess because one person kills numerous people, they do get notoriety, they do get fame, they do get this admiration from people and they get nicknames. I guess his was the Killer Clown. Um, I don't know of any other nicknames he got because he did dress up as a clown called Pogo. Anyway, um, he entertained children as Pogo the Clown and he was a prominent, uh, well-respected and well-liked citizen of Chicago for many, many years while he raped, tortured, and murdered upwards of 30 young men, teenage boys. Um, so it's good that he's basically, you know, he's more faint, you know, you know, the one thing about him being known is that he's known for being an evil person, not for his good deeds. That's the only thing I can think about um, as far as serial killers. Um, you know, no one gives a shit that he met um, Jimmy Carter's wife. No one gives a shit that he, you know, made the sick children happy as his little Pogo the Clown act. No one gives a shit about anything he did that was good because all of his evil deeds pretty much overshadowed his good deeds. So, uh, this movie stars Brian Dennehy, the most brilliant, one of the most brilliant actors. Um, the first thing I ever saw Brian Dennehy in was, of course, First Blood from 1982, 10 years prior to this movie. He does a great job as, uh, John Wayne Gacy, um, 
at first it was like, oh God, that man was disgusting. You know, how could you play such a disgusting character or disgusting human being, you know, of history? But uh, he does an excellent job without sinking into the depravity. Um, You don't see any of the depraved acts on screen. You just see it's more of a police procedural um, drama, which is really good for me. Uh, Unlike this newer movie that came out in 2003 starring a really good character actor whose name I'll put up on screen. Uh, And I'll talk more about Uh, This other movie, which was titled Gacy, I think the subtitle was The Crawl Space. Anyway, let's get back to uh, To Catch a Killer. Uh, Brian Dennehy plays Gacy as arrogant, uh, confident, very um, in control, threatening. And when he's taken too many uh, quaaludes and drank too much, he's very psychotic, very uh, frightening, and again, very threatening. So there's a Jekyll and Hyde side to Dennehy's portrayal of Gacy, but uh, it's never disgusting or slobbery, or he never is seen really, you know, in any kind of depraved acts. The closest he comes to is when he handcuffs in two different scenes. Uh, One, when he's dressed as the clown, he handcuffs a boy right in front of the cops. And the other uh, is when he, while the cops are outside surveilling him as, as they are ordered to, he handcuffs a boy and he's he really does intend to kill this boy, but he knows the cops are surveilling him, and he sort of goes into this trance, or he goes into this, you know, from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde, and he goes into this trance where he really wants to murder this kid, and the phone ringing just kind of snaps him out of it, and he just says to to himself, "I, I can't do this because the cops are outside, and He's, he's really convinced of his own um, cleverness and his own... Uh, he's convinced of his own ability to continuously fool the police and continuously get away with killing numerous people. So, anyway, um, the, other, the other main actor is Michael Riley. I don't know much about Michael Riley. I don't think I've seen him in a whole lot. Maybe I have, but this is a standout for him. He plays uh, the real-life detective who led the uh, pretty much task force that took down Gacy and stopped him for good. And um, he's amazing in the role. He is tired, he's exhausted, he's frustrated, and he's just driven by um, this final victim of Gacy's, uh, Christopher Gant, uh, a boy who works at a local drugstore. Christopher Gant is not, uh, they, they did change some names uh, for the movie, for this uh, particular movie. Uh, Christopher Gant is based on Robert Peast, and Robert Peast is John Wayne Gacy's final victim. Um, This boy uh, worked at a local drugstore in Des Plaines, which is kind of a suburb of Chicago, I guess, and um, John Wayne Gacy was seen talking to this kid about a job, like a, cons- a construction job, because what Gacy was a business owner of a small construction company that employed young boys. And the kid was last seen talking about going outside and speaking with Gacy about a summer job or a job. I think in the movie, the job was supposed to start, you know, pretty soon because he wanted to get more money 
um, he was going to build a dark room because he was a really good photographer. In real life, uh, Peast, Robert Peast was, he was like a really good gymnast. He was a phot photographer and he wanted to be an astronaut later on in life. He was a straight A student. He was very popular, well liked. And back in those days, of course, just like in the case of Dean Coral from Houston, Texas. And in a lot of these cases, people were like, well, maybe he ran away from home. You know how the police always are. These, well, they, they, they probably just ran away. Children, you know, these children are always, you know, labeled as runaways, but the family was like, no, what did he have to run away from? He was. You know, he had a lot of stuff in his life that was going really well. He was not from an unhappy home. So, and this one, the detective uh, had a Polish last name, and I cannot pronounce it without butchering it, but John, uh, Michael Riley played him. His name was Joe Cause. I'll just call him Joe Cause, because I cannot, I'll just butcher the last name. And uh, Michael Riley's character knew from the very beginning that this kid was no runaway and he had just been promoted to um, a lieutenant and a lot of the older uh, police officers on the force were they resented him and didn't want to be ordered around by a kid but he had uh, earned his position and he immediately got them looking for this boy and since Gacy was the last known person to talk to this kid or to be seen with this kid, he pretty much, you know, tunnel visioned on Gacy. And it was good that he did so because when they searched Gacy's house, they found all kinds of trophies that didn't belong to him. They found jewelry, they found um, clothing, they found underwear, pairs of underwear, and then they found all this you know, pornography and stuff like that. And they found a, you know, later in, when they did another search, they found uh, torture, paraphernalia, and blood stains. And then another search w went on and they found, uh, they smelled a, a strange smell. And it wasn't, you know, like in that, one movie that came out in 2003 called The Crawl Space, Gacy The Crawl Space, where there were maggots in the, they really exaggerated, where this, it stunk and there was maggots crawling all over the outside of the house and anybody who saw that should have, you know, phoned the police over and over again and it was really exaggerated. It was made into a, just a horror movie like a just a jump scare horror movie like like all these post 9-11 movies are like I said that movie sucked in comparison to this 1992 Brian Dennehy Michael Riley movie um movies aren't made very well anymore they're not made with victims in mind they're not made with dignity in mind they're not made with real entertainment and real you know entertain my mind they're not made with that in mind they're made with cheap jump scares in mind it seems like that's just the pattern after 9-11 I don't I don't get it but that's just seems to be my that's my opinion anyway they search Gacy's house several times and they come back with all these clues and all the while, Gacy is being surveilled after Christopher Gant, based on Robert Peast, after he is, you know, after he is missing and they're searching for him and they're surveilling Gacy 24-7. He's angry. He threatens to sue. He's just going psychotic on them. He's threatening, you know, to sue the entire police department for, I don't know, a quarter of a million dollars or something like that. 
all the while they're trying to get search warrants from the DA or whatever she is, played by Meg Foster. She, I guess she's trying to be as cooperative as she can, but she's got her hands tied. It's not a boring movie. It's like a two-part miniseries, I suppose. I, I almost thought it was from HBO or something because I heard the... I heard the word shit a couple of times and god damn it a couple of times so I know it wasn't an American TV miniseries. Oh, heaven forbid they cuss a little bit. It's a really great movie. It's 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 very suspenseful. It's well acted and um, very dignified, respectful of the victims of the movie. You know who Christopher Gant is. Um... You see him trying to pick up some kid that just got off a bus. You get a little bit of an idea who he is. And he's spared, thankfully. And then you get an idea of who this Billy is. Who he almost kills, but he gets stopped. And you get an idea who a couple of other kids are through their parents. How their parents have been worried about them being missing. And they're dead. You just, you, somehow you get an idea just because their parents are worried about them. And the narrator of this movie, uh, To Catch a Killer, he gives the compassion that you need to connect to all of the characters. And Brian Dennehy, even though he's portraying the monster, at least you connect socially to him. That's what you need in order to enjoy any kind of movie. I give To Catch a Killer. I can't think of a damn thing to say wrong about it. It's brilliant. It's compassionate. So it's a great movie. I recommend it highly. To Catch a Killer from 1992 starring Brian Dennehy and Michael Riley.